Yes. Is everyone coming out today healthy as far as you know? Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty good. And uh, a lot of guys I hadn't seen, you know, a lot of non-roster guys, <clears throat> a lot of um, minor league invites, you know, that I hadn't seen or didn't know. And uh, it was good to lay eyes on them and to, uh, you know, to see what they, you know, what they had. And, you know, it's, it's day number one, but, you know, we got good bodies. We got some very good arms. And, uh, you know, I feel Mike and, uh, you know, have something to work with. You know, in our, in our, even if the guys don't make the club, it seems like we have more more depth in, in, the, uh, in the arms department than, you know, we've had in the past even. What was your first impression when you saw Bryce? Oh, I mean, he looks strong, but he always looks strong, you know. And uh, I was kind of first impression that he's a cowboy fan. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? No, that's good. You like who you like. I tell people that. You know, you like who you like. You know, I used to be a Cowboys fan as a kid. And up until, you know, a few years ago now, I'm just a good, you know, I'm a good good game fan. As long as, as long as the game's good and I don't have to go out and clean the garage in the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I can stay there until the end. You know? Dusty, what do you know about Adam Lynn and how do you kind of see him fitting in? Well, uh, uh, I don't know a lot about him lately. I know Cito Gaston, uh, when he was at Toronto, he really liked Adam Lynn. He told me about him a long time ago. And uh, I'd spoken to Adam. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I heard he's a great teammate. Uh, he, and he, he used to hit the ball out of left field like a right-hand hitter. Then the uh, last couple of years when I talked to him, uh, he said he's gotten a little pull happy. So perhaps we can get him back to the... Uh, you know, the center of the field, um, uh, the big part of the ballpark, because if you can hit the ball out the left, they, should, they shouldn't they should really have a, any set way to pitch you or to play you. And he told me that last year they had shifted the shirt scout way up the middle on him and that, you know, he was a little a little stubborn uh, trying to hit through the shift. Um, but um, I just reminded him that he was a hitter, not a slugger, because, you know, I mean, this guy's hit 300, 320, you know, when you don't hit 320, um, you know, pulling everything, and uh, so uh, his 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 homers remained about the same, but his bad average went, you know, went down. That's what happens when you, you know, try to pull everything. So um, yeah, he's excited to be here, and uh, you know, we have some good competition, uh, you know, for you know for jobs, and uh, you know, if you're going to win, you you have to have depth. And uh, in, a, in a number of areas, so you know we, you know we have some depth, um, and uh, you know I, I just got to get a good look at some of the guys. You know, once the game starts. Is he strictly oh. a first baseman, or you, could you see him maybe left field? Well, I mean, I was told, like I said, I got to see him play first. You know, because I have only seen him maybe a couple times on TV. You know, and uh, you know he's <clears throat> in the past. You know, he's not that old, but in the past he played first base and outfield and, uh, you know, corner outfield. So I haven't seen him throw, I haven't seen him get leads and uh, <coughs> get his jumps and angles and stuff like that. And so we'll, we'll determine that, uh, you know, during the games. It, does he offer the possibility of a, not a straight platoon, but a mini platoon with both Worth and Zimmerman? If he does have any type of uh, positions? Well, you know, right now Worth and Zimmerman are my, are, are my left fielder and, and, and first baseman. And uh, you know uh, that's a tough sell, especially with 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 Jason, you know, at, at 37 or whatever he is, and, and in his option year, you know, and, and Jason's worked extremely hard to you know to you know get himself into even better shape than he was before. You know, he takes you know great care of himself, and um, you know when I think of Jason, I think of you know guys that are in great shape that are. In, in the NFL, and also guys like I was watching Jason Terry, he's 40 years old, and I was watching um, uh, uh, my, my sister's favorite. He's played with Toronto Raptors. It's 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 oh yeah, I mean these mm -hmm. guys are still are still you know very very productive, and you see Tom Brady, uh, and so I don't see why Jason can't can't play and, and be productive for. Um, you know, some years to come. And as far as them, I mean, he's my pick to click. Um, 
um, you know, to you know to come out and have a great, a great year. He's starting spring training healthy. Or last year we had to monitor his uh, his playing time to try to get him over his foot uh, injuries. And so, you know, Zim's not old and he's not overweight, and so I don't see why Zim, you know, can't you know have a uh, outstanding year, and I got to give those guys, you know, not. But like I said, you need depth, and, and you know, on your team. And, and who knows, uh, you know, guys can get hurt or whatever it is, and then you got to depend on the guys that, you know, you were having. You signed them for that depth. And uh, but right now, um, you know, we're, we're trying to find room for, um, you know, for Lynn and for uh, Robinson, who did a great job for us. Also, what, to follow up on that just a little, yes. uh, Zim was mentioning today that he uh, had a couple of tweaks he might work on this year. Mm -hmm. He said last year you had talked to him about hitting, being more aggressive early in the count. And, <laughs> he uh, told you and, that. And Murphy's, Murphy's been talking about launch angle and right. how important he thinks it is to get the ball in the air. Well, you're the, the everybody can't get the ball in the air. You know what I mean? But uh, I mean, I think I, I, I've read some of uh, you know the comments as far as launch angle and getting the ball in the air and he's hit the, hit the ball as hard as anybody. But I think that, you know, the primary, um, I think it's easier to get the ball in the air early in the count if you're anticipating than it is hitting with two strikes all the time because you're more in a protective mode than you are in a in an aggressive mode. So uh, I just talked to him more about, uh, you, know, the, you know, the word gets around. And... Um, you don't want the opposition, and I've, I've shown Zim some reports that I had when I was with the Reds, even. You know, I showed him, Dan Espinosa, um, when he was here, and, uh, you know, Jason Worth, because I kept, you know, all my reports for when I came over here, so I could show guys exactly how we tried to pitch him, and it was pretty much the same way they were pitching him last year, even though those reports are five, six years old. And so uh, we had gotten around, you know, that Zim takes a, a lot early in the count. And uh, it, it's hard to hit 0-1, oh, and 0-2, oh, and, and everybody talks about getting deep in the count. Well, you know, a lot of, a lot of times some guys get deep in the count and this makes them deeper in the count. And uh, uh, so, um, you know, one of the secrets to hitting is to not let the opposition know when you're going to swing the first pitch, and and, and guess, in that way you and if they if they if they see you swing at the first pitch fastball, in the zone, sometimes and then they're ooh and then they'll start changing their thought process and then they might throw you some breaking balls and then or something out of the zone that puts you in a, in a hitter's count, to, you know two and one you know uh, one and zero oh versus being one and two and 0-2 oh, all the time, you know, it's, it's very difficult to hit like that. So, uh, you know, you got to start with one thing first, you know, you, we can say, we can talk about launch angle and all that, but it, the first thing is that you have to be on the attack, and that's the word I use, you know. So Zim was talking about that and, and saying that there's so many more wipeout pitches now than there were 10 years ago that you don't want to get the two strikes. Well, I don't know if there's any more wipeout pitches. You're putting yourself to be wiped out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, and plus, you know, as you get older, it gets easy, easier to get wiped out. You know what I mean? Where when you're young, you got young reactions, you got young legs, you got, you haven't had any injuries. You know, there's, there's a lot of things working against you, um, you know, by getting deeper into count as you get older. What do you think is the key for a player <clears throat> who's had success and goes through particularly down year mm -hmm. to get back up to maybe where he used to be. Well, where he can be. almost everybody in this game is, has, has, has gone through that. You know, it's how you make adjustments to your, you know, your body type, your new man muscles and reactions versus, you know, kid muscles and kid reactions. And, uh, you know, the key is to, is to remain confident. I think that's number one. And, uh, um, you know, to have some success, especially, um, you know, hopefully early. And, um, you know, I, I don't know too many players, um, except a few Hall of Famers, and they probably had even some down years at some point in time due to injuries or, you know, whatever. 
uh, it takes. Um, you know, I like to use Cal Ripken as, a, as an example because Cal, I mean, he tried a uh, hundred different things. You know, anybody that's noticed him, you know, he had maybe different stances at different p times of his career. You watch um, Kari Stremski, you know, and, and Reggie Smith told me when I was with the Dodgers getting a little older, he just, you know, he, he reminded me, you know, bring your hands down some, get closer to the uh, the zone of where the ball is because you don't have, you know, quite the reactions, but you have um, you have knowledge. And uh, as you get older, you, you, you hit more on knowledge. Uh, the situation, if it's a double play situation, you know which pitches that they will probably throw you, a sinker or throw you something that, that's going to make you hit the ball on the ground. Uh, you know, stripe, a strikeout situation. Um, and as you as you get into veteran status, and I've seen it with a number of players, uh, Barry Bonds, Hank Aaron, is uh, the situation dictates, um, and also who's behind you, who's on first base in front of you, or whatever, dictates what they're going to throw you. And through process of elimination, then you almost know, almost know what's coming, and that's 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 how you make these adjustments as you get older. How do you see your role as a manager when you have, whether it's a guy, uh, you know, the reasons might be different, whether it's a guy like mm -hmm. Zimmerman, let's say, Bryce Harper right, last right. year. Your role as a manager with helping yeah. guys? I mean, yeah, because I've been where they are, you know. Uh, I haven't been, you know, to the mountaintop, it's, 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 but I was pretty close. And, um, you know, my role as a manager sometimes is two things. I mean, sometimes you you help and aid, and sometimes you um, you know you let a person fail. Sometimes because sometimes I feel that sometimes we overcoach, and sometimes you have to let a person fail before they will really really listen. I think that that applies in almost in every you know walk of life, and uh, you know when you're on top, it's hard to listen to anybody. You know what I mean? I don't need anybody but my bat. But as 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 the failures mount and you don't do as much, um, then you tend to, you know, listen more or seek help more. One question, please. The Nationals they have uh, just they lost in the first uh, round of the playoffs mm -hmm. in the last five years, three times in a row. Mm -hmm. What under your massive experience? What do you think in that in that occasions the team miss? What do you think? Well, what happened? Well, I don't know. I've only been here one year. But, you know, you go in the playoffs and you miss in Strasburg that might have pitched game two. You miss uh, Ramos, that, that was our, you know, big bat. And and you see a couple of times when, you know, most of the time it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not getting the timely hit that, that, that puts you in that situation. If you got, I mean, you look at Big Poppy. In Boston, I mean, Big Poppy carried him almost by himself. You need somebody hot, hopefully in the middle of the lineup, or either, you know, setting the stage. And so there are a lot of variables, uh, you know, that happens. And um, so you know, you can't worry about what happened. You got to worry about what will, what will be, and what will happen. You talk about the deep, the deep in the squad right now. Yes. Are you confident right now with the team you have? With the quality you have in the team, mm -hmm. are you confident the Nationals they can challenge finally for the title? Yeah, I mean, I feel I always feel that, but but I mean, sometimes you're fooling yourself. But I'm not fooling myself this time. You know what I mean? And and uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, you know we we haven't made any real real you know wholesale changes. I mean, you have to be uh, you have to be you have to have personnel and talent. That can contend number one, and then that talent has to has to uh, uh, you know persevere through tough times. Number two and number three, you know you hope some guys have you know have great years and stay healthy, you know as much as anything, because uh, um, you know they say injuries are no excuse and health. That well, it, it, it depends who's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you have to work a lot in the mentality, in the confidence of the players? Well. You always have to work on that, you know, and um, because you know, I mean, sometimes 
you know, us as athletes can get, you know, fragile from time to time, but you have to be strong. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that we have to, you know, be more aware. I was thinking about it yesterday uh, because um, since I've known the Nationals, you have Goodyear, <clears throat> Badger, Goodyear, Badger. So now we're, we're, we are trying to get to a situation where, you know, we have back-to-back -back years and then back-to-back-to-back years and back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back years and then you, you increase your odds and your chances of, of, of winning. You know, the good teams I've been on, we were, I mean, we were in the hunt five out of six years. You know, uh, and uh, you know, you look at, uh, I mean, you look at New England. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, the Lakers with Phil Jackson. Every year is different. You know, um, uh, you look at uh, the Chicago Bulls. Even though they had one of the greatest players of all time, um, you got to find a way to win because every year, you know, is different. You know, the challenges every year are different. I think our challenges this year are even more. You know than last year because I mean you look at it, you know Atlanta's much improved. I mean much improved. Look at the Mets. You know they'll probably be healthier. You look at the Phillies. They're much improved. And you look at the Marlins. You know they're much improved. I think I mean this is going to be a dog fight. And uh, at the end of the the dog fight, and uh, I I feel that we'll be victorious. But it's it's not going to be easy. Let's say that happens. Let's say you overcome all those challenges, get back to the playoffs, mm -hmm. and are lucky enough to, be, to to achieve the one thing that you as a manager have mm -hmm. not yet achieved. Right. You walk away. You done that? I always said if I win one, I'm win two. That don't sound like walk away to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'll worry about that when I get there. But uh, that's not my plan, you know, right now. I mean. Why do people always want somebody to walk away? <laughs> you know, I mean, where are you walking to? <laughs> that's that. That's what nobody ever answers. Uh, what kind of growing pains do you expect from Trey Turner at shortstop? Well, number one, you know, it'd be different question if you asked me. He's growing pains in center field. And, you know, he went back to growth period back at shortstop. But you know we have we have you know we have Chris Byer here that's 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 outstanding. I mean he was a young shortstop. Um, shoot, he was out of Double A I think when he came up with the Giants and Willie Mays, and so he can uh, you know he's one of the best. You know he's one of the best that I had in Cincinnati. You know he did the same you know with a young shortstop in Cincinnati. You know he knows uh, you know what the workload should be. You know he knows. Um, you know what it's like to, you know, to play, you know, every day. Um, you know the growing pains. Uh, the challenges will be that leadoff and playing shortstop, because you're doing a whole bunch of work offensively, and you're doing a whole bunch of work defensively. Because you know, I mean, you get most of the play is shortstop. So he's in a situation where he's. I don't know if they use spark plugs anymore, but he's just, you know, he's a spark plug on offense and he's the brakes on defense. So that's 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 like doing double work. Yeah, but I think, you know, he's looking forward to it because I asked him last year, I told him that I was going to play him at a game at, at shortstop once we clinched it, which I did. And I, and I asked him, did he, um, you know, did he miss it? And uh, anybody that's played shortstop, you know, and move to another position. I mean, he definitely miss it. You know, I was with Robbie Thompson the other night, and he he played second base, All Star second base, but he came up as a shortstop. And uh, I talked to Matt Williams. And Matt came up; he was number one draft choice as a shortstop, and then he got moved to third base. So, you know, most of these guys, have, most of the, you know, right-handed throwing, if they have speed and, and arm strength, I mean, they came up playing shortstop. So. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, he's, I mean, this kid's not faced by too much. No, no, it's early, but when you look at the lineup, if you kind of had to outline it today, do you see, do you see Turner one, even two, or have you kind of, how do you see that dynamic working out? Hmm. I don't know, but then, but then who you put three, four, five? 
Are you yeah. going to have, you no, know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, you guys have done lineups, I'm sure. You know, do you put three lefties in a row now? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and, you know, Jason was pretty good at, at number two. So, um, you know, that's what we got spring training for, and I have to talk to the guys, you know, prior to, I mean, I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> you know, but I'd rather, you know, I'd, I'd rather talk to them and, and, and you know, not, I don't know if it's getting their blessings, but at least have them accept it um, to, and explain why I feel the way I do about things. Could you see Eaton as a spark maybe at number six, or even ninth bottom into the lineup as well? Yes, I could. <laughs> or who says? Then depends how, how how you know how Zim is, is swinging, you know. So we'll see. Because the, I mean, because somebody got a hit. I mean, Anthony's pretty good in that in that RBI spot, you know. So you try to stagger your lineup. Like I said, I got to talk to these guys. For, I mean, I I played this in my mind a hundred times. I just haven't um, spoken to them or didn't have to really speak to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of options, though. Yes, I do. I like options. <laughs> what, what's your sense of Murphy's health coming into camp? Yeah, Murph said he's, he's fine. And if Murph wasn't, then, then he probably wouldn't be going to the WBC, you know. And uh, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Murph said he feels great. On that about the WBC, is Warwick in the pitcher pool thing? The, um, I believe yeah, I believe he is, yes. Yeah. So who knows, maybe he could it depends how how far they go. You know, he might pitch just one game or he might pitch two or or three. I mean, who knows? I mean we'll see. And and, and the people that are running WBC I trust that they have everybody's best interests at heart. And I really trust you know, I really trust Jim Leland. You know, a lot. All right. Hey, one more? Some arms have gotten ruined at the WBC, especially <coughs> major league arms. I know that. And <laughs> do, you, do you speak to them about how you may have World Series adrenaline with a March arm and how you cope with that? Yeah, I've, I've spoken to uh, I, I've spoken to Roy Tanner yeah, about that. But you know, how do you how do you, with the stands packed and you know? Playing Cuba or playing whoever you're going to play, how do you um, monitor that or, and, and govern that? You know, and you certainly don't want us to, um, you know, to lose. You know, you got national pride here, but you certainly, um, you know, don't want them overworked either. That's a that's a that's a very delicate uh, situation. All right. Thanks, Dusty. Okay.